everybody it is saturday july 27th and you know what that means it is time for the higher risk wrestling podcast i acknowledge our new tribal chief jared well i'm the new tribal chief no i'm not so school but i'm your host jeremy pierce welcome welcome one and all check out the socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram and of course the 215 on twitter and today's show it's different we're just gonna have a discussion we're gonna talk about rosters the bloated rosters the benefits the downsides and what needs to happen but for now you know what's next so just go on and hit my music no superstar spotlight no episode list for today mainly because i just couldn't figure out something i just wanted to really talk about this um Wrestling is in a very good position right now. The WWE is experiencing some of the best critical claim it's had in a very long time. AEW is right now negotiating a brand new TV deal. Um, TNA is, looks like they're finally back on track. Ring of Honor just put on a very good pay-per-view last night. MLW and NWA are now getting TV deals. Wrestling is great, but what makes wrestling great are the people involved the the rosters the the wrestlers that go out there and put on a show for us all and not everything is great sometimes the WWE and especially AEW they both have very big rosters and that's including their development whereas tna and ring of honor don't really but ring of honor is a different story which we're going to discuss um it's hard right to to cater to everyone you know what i mean it's hard to give someone the time but it can be done so what are the benefits of having a bloated roster well the first things first is it's you have the next man up mentality injuries happen period we know that i know that injuries happen and when someone gets hurt you have to find the time to pivot and there are times where You don't pivot. Case in point, when Chris Statlander got hurt, they just kept the TBS championship on Jade Cargill because their original plan was always for Chris Statlander to beat Jade Cargill. But you didn't pivot. Whereas you see something like Rhea Ripley getting hurt and you pivot to, and it was part of the story, because it makes sense to live Morgan now being elevated. So the next man up mentality works. It's, I think, easier to do in the women's division than it is the men's, just because it feels like the men are just sometimes more established in the hierarchy where a woman can be moved up and down the roster. Even though you do have those people that are on the top, you can really like slot someone like for example i wouldn't be surprised if let's say Liv got hurt and he pivoted to eo sky becoming women's champion because it makes sense eo sky is the greatest so you can pivot you can take this time take the the effort to say hey they're hurt we need you and then another benefit is you have plenty of challengers for championships with a big roster you should be able to have a good division for your men your woman you know your tag team your world your trios whatever belts you have on that roster you should be able to say hey we're gonna slot you in here go do this and it works extremely well with tna because uh they run intergender matches you know what i mean the digital media championship and the x division championship are both intergender so that affords them the opportunity to have different challengers like the current 
digital media champion is PCO. Let's say somehow, some way, he got into a feud with Jessica Havoc. I could see Havoc becoming champion, and now the X Division Championship is part of the women's division. Like it, it just it works. You know what I mean? It makes sense. So you, if you have this big roster, you have this just drawer of people you can slide in and you can build up and the biggest benefit i've seen is if you build your roster right you have a diverse roster you have different groups of people from different walks of life with different body types and different ways of talking and wrestling and it works and that's the beauty like if you look at the tna women's division you have rosemary you have havoc but then you have jordan grace you have Giselle Shaw, you have Ash by Elegance, you have Alicia Edwards, you have Killer Kelly. All of these women are different. If you look at, you know, AEW's tag team division, they have different groupings of teams that just work. You know what I mean? But for all of those benefits, I feel like there are many more to the downsides. And I think... The first thing is when we talked about the next man up and the plenty of challengers, you can't rotate out because someone is so established. It it doesn't make sense for them to go anywhere else. I give you a prime example. Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair will always be in the main event scene. Period. End of discussion. Her character is so broken and so badly developed that it doesn't make sense for her and it can't make sense for her to be outside of the title picture that's just bad so because you can't rotate her out you can't elevate someone like Zelina Vega you can't elevate Zoe Stark you can't elevate Naomi even though Naomi's a former champion you know what I mean once people are stuck at the top it's hard to put someone else in there and they've tried especially WWE, they've tried and Remember, my my number one saying is you're only as good as you're booked. And you've been booked badly. Prime example, Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal is a former WWE champion. He beat Randy Orton. He went on a, like a six-month reign. And in that time period, you were supposed to establish him as a champion. So when Brock Lesnar says, hey, I don't want to face um, Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam, you're supposed to say, hey, he's our champion. We need to make a new star. Do it. Period. You can't cater to everyone. And after Jinder Mahal was pretty much sent to the woods that lost the championship to AJ Styles, he was never the same. He pretty much was a jobber, a top quote unquote jobber, and never sniffed another world title ring. He became a US champion. People forget he won the US title at WrestleMania in like a fatal four way match. But. You can't rotate out. The Money in the Bank briefcase was a prime example of let's see how these people work. You had Ziggler. You had Jack Swagger. You failed with Baron Corbin. You failed with um, Damian Sandow. You, you need to establish people not get everybody can't be at the top and, and AEW does does that really really well people are so upset that okada and jay white aren't in the main event scene everyone can't be in the main event scene everyone can't be on top and if you look at okada if you look at jay white they're clearly having fun so because you can't rotate out you're stuck with people that sit in catering where is Odyssey Jones? Where is Odyssey Jones? He is sitting in catering. Let that sink in. This man has been on the main roster for two years and has not been outside for a single match. They don't even use them on speed. They don't use them on main events. Where is Tamina? Where is MVP? Where is, I don't know, Giovanni Vinci? You, 
you you can't use these people if you're not going to use them. I know that that that's a that sounds weird, but it's like saying you don't know what you don't know. So you can't use these people if you don't use these people. What does sitting and catering do? The same goes for AEW. Where's Aaron Solo? Where's the Dark Order, even though they were just on Ring of Honor last night? Where's Butcher? Where's Blade? You know what I mean? Where the hell is Dan Housen? I know he's healthy. Where's Drillistico? You can't use these people if you don't use these people. Yes, you can sit and cater and collect a check, but didn't you get into this business to, to wrestle? Didn't you get into this business to put on a show for people? And when you sit and cater in, that leads to cuts. WWE just had a roster cuts recently. And they let go of a few people, a few names, and we're about to get a few more um, let go. If you heard the word on the street, there's going to be a few more people let go because they're not going to use one of them as a former world champion. It's happening in WWE. So, because your roster's so big, you can't use everybody. And because you can't use everybody, they sit in the back. And because they sit in the back, you're going to fire them. And why are you firing them? Because you can't find ways to use them. It 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 snowballs into something bigger and bigger and bigger until they are ultimately let go. And then when they get let go, they're going to be signed to another company. If they're good enough, if someone believes in them, they're going to another company, period. Prime example, and at least the last topic for the downsides, the unseen potential, our current AEW world champion, Swerve Strickland. Swerve and the WWE was a former Cruiserweight champion. Didn't do much. You got to remember, before Swerve joined the WWE, he was in Lucha Underground. And we saw something in him. But you go back and look at that Lucha Underground roster. See the people that they had, the stars that we have in this industry. Another prime example is I'll take you back. I'll take you back. When Christian was let go by the WWE, he went to TNA. Wrestled under the name Christian Cage, where he wrestles under now. You know what they did in TNA? They built the company around him because they saw how good he was. They even had him above AJ Styles. Another prime example Samoa Joe. I know, you know, just how good Samoa Joe is. And yet the WWE never thought to give him a world championship reign on the main roster. Every summer, he'd be built up as a contender. He'd be built up as a killer. And they would never pull the trigger. You know what AEW did? Yo, come over here. Longest reigning TV champion. Said, yo, I want the world title. That's my focus. What they do? Yeah, he became AEW World Champion and did an excellent job. And yet, for some reason, WWE never thought to do that. So, now, let's break it down again. So, because you can't rotate out, because your roster's so big, people sit in the back, they sit and cater, and they don't get used, they get caught into the show, Nothing happens for them. So now that the city can catering, you're looking at your your books and saying, "Why are we paying this person? They're not getting used, and they haven't been used for a long time." Now they get cut, and once they get cut, someone believes in them. They'll sign somewhere else. And why did they sign somewhere else? Why did that company sign them? Because they saw the unseen potential. They 
tapped into something special. It's great to have a big roster, but come on, ladies and gentlemen, something's got to give. Let's look at the Dirty Bees roster, right? Currently on the men's, let's look at the men's raw roster, right? They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like they have about 40 men on the main roster. People are out with injuries. The women's roster, that's over 20. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's twenty-one, and some people are hurt. Smackdown's obviously small because they have two hours, and then you have right people that are injured or free agents. Big E's out, Brock is out, Eric is out, um, Hikaleo who's signed but hasn't been used yet. Jimmy's out, MVP's out, about to be cut. Omas. Where's he at? Roman Reigns was coming back. Remember, you can't rotate out. Alexa Bliss, Carmella, uh, Charlotte, Raquel, Shati, Tamina, Valhalla, all out, or either injured or on maternity leave. That's not including, right, the NXT roster. Remember, the goal of NXT is to, at some point, move from NXT to the main roster. And the NXT men's roster is bigger than the raw men's roster their women's roster is as big or bigger than the raw women's roster and remember at some point you want to call these people up which means people at the top have to be let go but again can't rotate out you can make an educated guess of who's going to be kept who's going to be cut like bailey's not going anywhere bianca's not going anywhere um jade naya they're not going anywhere charlotte's not going anywhere Rhea, becky and so on. So you've pigeonholed yourself into keeping people down while not moving people up because the people at the top are established. And then you have your performance center. You're still signing people. Let that sink in. The Dirty B has to figure out something. And I think right now, they're in a stalemate. They're legitimately in a stalemate. You can't do anything. Where do you go? Are you going to cut people just to bring up people from NXT who aren't ready? Because remember, if I'm looking at let's look I'm looking at the the NXT men's roster. You're calling up. Well, remember this. You're also sending people down to NXT. Because Ashanti the Adonis was just on the main roster. Same with Cedric Alexander. The Good Brothers keep going down to NXT. And at some point, right, you're gonna call up Obi Femi. You're gonna call up Nathan Frazier. You're gonna call up Trick. And Wesley and Javon Evans. You're going you're going you're going to call out Roxanne Perez and Julia and Stephanie Vacare and Thea Hell and Lola Vice and Carmen Petrovic and Gigi Dolan. You're going to call up these women. You're going to call up Cora Jade. And it it it's worked. For you know a little bit. If you if you if I'm let's one more time. We look at the current roster, the main roster. I'm gonna tell you the people who haven't started in NXT. Maybe they were on the Indies, but they got signed to WWE and then they moved to NXT. 
Carlito, Chad Gable, CM Punk, Dominic Mysterio, Drew McIntyre, Hear that? See that pause? See that pause? Kofi Kingston. The men started out on tough enough. That's just the men. Sheamus, Truth, Ray. Everybody else started NXT. So NXT is working. The entire, let me look at it. The entire Raw women's roster minus Natalia minus Natalia all started in NXT same goes for the Smackdown women's roster outside of Jade Cargo the entire and well Naomi started in the NXT game show so outside of Jade Cargo the entire Smackdown women's roster started in NXT so NXT works and then with TNA Tony Khan just likes signing people he just does because their roster is huge and I'm a couple the TNA the AEW roster with the Ring of Honor roster and I think that genuinely does help AEW that they have Ring of Honor. So you can fall back on that to that, hey, if I can't use your AEW right now, I can use your Ring of Honor. And I'll say this time and again, Ring of Honor needs their own dedicated show with their own dedicated roster with only a few people able to move back and forth between AEW and Ring of Honor. Once this new deal gets signed, I think we're going to see a really, really good change and what goes down in Ring of Honor and what goes down in AEW. And we'll have a little bit more concrete plans. But Tony Khan loves signing people. The roster is huge. The men's roster is huge. When it comes to the women's... The, women, the women's roster is so big. The, the women's roster is so big. And not everybody can get on TV. And I think you have to put some of these people in Ring of Honor. And that's okay. That's okay. So, Tony's issue is you need to stop signing people. Stick with what you have. Get this TV deal done period you'll be fine you'll be fine i promise you you'll be fine and you have the show tony Khan gets three shows a week dynamite collision and rampage you have the time the effort with this large roster to establish your stars do it now he has said time and again that when they made aw people will rotate out which is good to give people a time off to give people, you know, time to be with their family to heal, so on and so forth. That's that's good. That's very, very good. But let's 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 stop signing people, Tony. It's and it's it's okay. It's okay. And as for TNA, so here's their issue. I I think their men's roster is fine. I think their women's roster is a little shallow. TNA has ways to get everybody on TV. I just think with the women, they need just a little bit more because the knockouts tag team titles keep going back and forth between two women or teams that are just women thrown together, not actual teams. So for TNA, just sign a little, a few more women. Just just lock that in because I think your men's roster is good I think you don't need to do much there right so just get a few more get a few more women lock it in you'll be good 
okay don't reach the point where you're like the other companies now i do think they could deal with maybe see they have explosion they need to treat explosion like rampage get a few more stories on there get that onto your youtube channel or somewhere else and then i think you can really expand your roster just a little bit more get a few, get some more money from anthem you know what i mean so work on that you'll be good listen wrestling is great wrestling is doing absolutely wonderful and i want to see everybody to see i don't i don't do tribalism here if you ask me who my favorite company is it's AEW. but i watch all wrestling AEW, ring of honor tna uh nxt new japan cml triple a mrw and nwa i just love wrestling i love professional wrestling and i want to see everybody succeed so let me know what you guys think thank you for listening thank you for watching i greatly greatly appreciate it um coming up i gotta get the schedules ready for august um i missed out on a few things this month i missed out on the flashback fridays i missed out on the let's talk about it but we're going to do better with that check out the socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram and of course the 215 on twitter and as always anna j willow nightingale chris statlander bailey isla dawn and Gigi dolan holla at your boy peace